Nick got so nice uh, bit of information. Um, very pointing, actually. Um, to to uh, really back to uh, you know kind of where we met, which is uh, the staggering thought. Because the staggering thought of that of that uh, Reuters piece was, is not to me that the banks can't make money until the yield curve. Uh, well, under the present situation, basically, given that short-term money has no place to go but up, because um, it's at zero, and that's what they they say that you know the central banks out of real toys, <coughs> so they're going to pay interest on the, on uh, reserves, etc. But the point being, that to me, is that it's not about the banks can't make money. It's about the banks won't lend. The banks won't lend. Now, uh, really raised a number of monetary policy questions in the, in that one in that one piece, Nick. Um, how about the you know one of the ones that the another one that the Austrians you know focus on, which which is uh, you know maturity transformation, you know the lack of uh, synchronicity with regard to maturity from lending, borrowing, and lending. But yeah, we got into this problem because nobody lends long term. Nobody, nobody, nobody borrows short, long term to lend long term. Okay, you know what I mean? Um, why not? Because the amount of financing that's available out there long term, nobody has any. Basically, nobody has any faith and confidence in the future, and so that's why the thirty-year mortgage has become risky. Uh, that's why you know uh, they start to back them up with insurance policies and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the lack of maturity transformation. How are you going to? How are you going to? Uh, uh, synchronizing maturities. How are you going to? Uh, how are you going to change that? What is going to change that? You see, and re remember that staggering thought. Okay, that staggering thought under these circumstances. Say, wow, that L is going to last forever. <laughs> that that L is going to last until we can find some way to get profits back into banking. Um, why? Because we rely on them for money. Okay, so there's no money in the system. Um, that's still the staggering thought. Uh, the problem that we depend on banks to lend all money into existence. And if we depend on banks to lend all money into existence, there has to be that match okay, of profit. And without the match of profit, we will not have any money. <laughs> we will not have any money. We'll the monetary system will essentially dry up. Uh, that's what's happening, you know. The article was really very, uh, well, very, it, it was very seeing, you know. Uh, it's the reasons why, you know, we're not going to see any money come down to Main Street. You know, why, the, why are those reserves there? Why did the Fed create those reserves to save the banking industry? You know, did they, did they, did they, you know, they go in and they lie to Congress and tell them, you know, well, we got to do all this stuff in order to, you know, save the economy to get the banks lending again, you know, and then, wow, well, the banks aren't lending again. Well, what was the problem? I thought the banks were going to lend again, you know, so the debt money system, <coughs> that's the problem, Nick. The problem is the debt money system. Um, I'm not sure that you care, you know, to address uh, any solutions to the problem. Uh, that you're kind of out there as a, uh, a neutral observer presenting, collecting and presenting information uh, to uh, your subscribers. Um, 
But the fact of the matter is that if people aren't talking about solutions, you know, if people aren't talking about causes, then they're not going to talk about solutions. You know, we got this supposed, uh, um, you know, financial crisis inquiry commission of some sort, uh, which has no teeth, uh, which has no purpose. You know, if you really want to have something like that happening, you know, it should be happening. First of all, it should happen much fresher to the crisis but also um, it should have a it should it should have a place in a problem solving uh, you know in, in an engineering a solution okay um, and instead you know we've got we've got the financial and banking reforms going forward without first looking at what went wrong where's that going to end up um, but most importantly to me, it's happening from a point of ignorance. And because it's happening from a point of ignorance, it really can't go anywhere. And that point of ignorance has to do with what money is and how money is created <coughs> and how the only real solution to any of to, to, to those problems that you've laid out there, Nick. You know, if you thought about it, you know. is that the monetary policy needs to be under the control of the government, the real control of the government, you know. You know, the guy who wrote the book, uh, Golden, the Wiser, uh, what his name was, um, when he addressed the matter of the independence of the, the need for independence from setting policy, you know, he, he's, he, said, he said clearly the concerns are misguided. It's not that the Federal Reserve or that the central bank, as he was really putting it, it's not that the central bank is not independent from the Congress. It's that the Congress is not independent from the central bank. Okay? Think about that. When the Congress is under the influence of the central bankers, kind of a system are we going to have? Uh, well, uh, this is the kind of system that we're going to have. And that's why um, and that's why that quote is, 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 is still remains true. You know, we haven't fixed we haven't fixed anything about the monetary system A and then B we haven't fixed anything about the financial crisis. We haven't fixed nothing about the financial crisis. You know, even Volcker is backpedaling on his call for restoring glass steagall. <coughs> I mean, I recognize that we need a hybrid version, but the basic structure of Glass-Steagall uh, to separate out uh, the investment banks from the uh, from both the insurance the insurance and uh, brokerage houses and the commercial banks to separate them all out um, is is necessary. You know, we'll we'll never have a sound monetary system until we have that separation, A, and B, until we have all of the money being created adequately, non-inflationary, non-deflationary, quantity and method by the government. So, again, it's an astute observation on the part of the Reuters, of Reuters uh, writer. But um, I'm not sure if it was penned to get some sympathy for the banker's predicament or not. Um, it may have been, you know. Uh, but poor banks can't really figure out a way to make any money. But, but it's really true, okay? It's really true. And the way the bankers see it, by the way, they know that we haven't fixed the problem. This is, the, this is the, probably the real story that's in there. They know that we haven't fixed the financial problem. They know the other shoe is going to drop. And when it drops, they want cash. They want cash. No matter what, they want cash. So, so should you. you know. um, that's why they're you know, cutting back on credit card uh, debt limits. They don't want to, they don't want to inc increase the OZs. They don't care to increase the OZs, even though people have come to rely on credit cards as uh, a 
source of money. 